All right. Hey, good morning, Neil. How's it going, man? Terrific. How are you, Eric? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Uh, you know, this is our, uh, I guess, uh, part two, part two of uh, the next hundred episodes, right? Of uh, of how to how to do Medicare FFL style. So uh, last week we just talked a little bit about uh, what the resources are and how to get how to start getting contracted. For those of you guys that missed that episode, it's um, fflmed.com. There's a big red get contracted button at the top. Just click that, and uh, and uh, you'll be in business. So, but today we wanted to talk uh, about how to incorporate Medicare into what you're already doing, right? Like the actual ABCs of, hey, I'm sitting down in a final expense appointment, or I'm sitting down in a mortgage. Neil's got some content to walk us through, but um, before we start talking about that, I did want to take a second and start and just talk about um, uh, licensing and credentialing and the things that you need in place to sell Medicare, right? So uh, those of you guys that are paying attention to the Medicare space, they just announced this week that 2023 AHIP, which is the, uh, do you know what that stands for? I actually was trying to look that up the other day. It's, there's, there's, a, there's an acronym, uh, AHIP which is basically a certification that you need if you're going to sell Medicare Advantage. And so we're not, we're not selling Medicare Advantage um, right now through FFL. So you don't need to worry about AHIP. So if you see that out there and you're like, oh, do I need to take this? If you want to take it, by all means, take it. It's very educational. There's nothing wrong with learning it. It's, and, I think it's $175, uh, or you can get a $50 discount through our partnership with Aetna. Uh, it takes it down to 125, um, but it's absolutely worth it. But it's also a lot of content, and you don't need it. It's not necessary. You can completely do everything that we're about to talk to without ever uh, cracking an AHIP course. Okay, what you do need is you do need a health license, a health line of authority from your resident state and any state that you intend to, you know, solicit Medicare apps in. So that's what you need in terms of licensing. But assuming you have that, assuming you're contracted and you have a writing number, uh, Neil, why don't you kind of take us through, like, uh, uh, your best practices on how to cross-sell uh, into Medicare? Yeah, sure. So America's Health Insurance Plans, that's what AHIP stands for. Got it. Creative acronym there. All right, so um, do I have permission to share my screen? You should. All right, cool. All right, let me know if you can see it. I can see it. Cool. All righty. So, uh, obviously, guys, you know, your hosts, Eric Hamadi and myself, Eric, the president of FFL Tribe. My agency is Family First Life American Omega Group. Let me turn these. You want the uh, closed caption, captions on or off? Oh, I don't. Uh, whatever. Whatever you prefer. All right. All right, so um, <clears throat> with respect to cross-selling Medicare, it's actually really easy. Um, once you kind of get your mind wrapped around the basics, Medicare is very simple to understand. Um, and because so many people don't understand it, especially the aging market, um, you know, of baby boomers 65 and older, you can really present yourself as a subject matter expert um, and somebody that's very knowledgeable, you know, and, and for lack of a better term, dumb it down um, for your clients so that they can really understand it. So what we're going to talk about, Eric, is first of all, the opportunity. I, I don't think we can hit home enough the amazing opportunity that Medicare presents for us. Um, obviously, you know, when it comes to Medicare, we can't say this enough, but, you know, FFL plus Medicare equals more clients for life, right? And so that has a, a double meaning. Obviously, you're going to retain your clients longer, but it also means more life insurance policies sold. Um, and helping us, um, you know, as a company, as Family First Life, get to a billion dollars this year, which I know we absolutely will. Uh, we're also going to talk about where to find the clients, what do you say, right, when you, when you talk to a client, and then next steps and questions. So, again, the opportunity, um, you know, this is, this is pretty amazing to see. The projected change in Medicare enrollment, and this is kind of really starting in 2000, but all the way, you know, to 2050. So we have another, what, 28 years until then, you know, so you and I should be long retired by then, um, you know, if we do things right. But if you look here, um, 
you know, the average growth when it comes to enrollment is just astounding, right? And then if you look at this blue line there, that's the Medicare enrollment in millions, all right, year by year. And it's just, I mean, over the next five to 10 years, you're looking at 60 to 80 million uh, enrolling in Medicare over that period of time. So, you know, the point is the opportunity is incredible and we don't have enough agents to serve all of these people and there's no better place to do it than obviously um, Family First Life. So guys, we already have the clients and the leads, so it's not another sector of the, of the industry where we have to go generate leads or find leads or buy leads. Um, we have current clients that are turning 65, so your current book of business, which you know Garfield Vaughn um, and uh, his entire team have been good enough to you know, be able to create a platform which we can access our current book of business, which is awesome. Uh, you also have lists out there that are available. I think, Eric, um, you know, you touched on last week the T65 app that's offered through Integrity, which is just incredible, yep. where you can look on that app, and within your general vicinity, uh, vicinity, it'll actually show you clients that are currently turning 65 and then what Medicare supplement in their specific county, because they are geographically specific, um, is going to be the lowest premium and best for them um, when it comes to Plan G and Plan N. Uh, and then you also have referrals. So the leads that exist right now is obviously uh, our life insurance leads. So think about all of the life insurance leads, uh, final expense, mortgage protection that you've purchased and you have in your CRM um, since, you know, throughout your career here at Family First. Those are all leads that you can go back and work with respect to Medicare, um, whether they're turning 65 or 65 and older. And then obviously there's mailers. Um, you know, that we have T65 list, and then obviously just door knocking um, when it comes to the T65 integrity app. So a lot of opportunity there and extremely low cost in terms of lead investment. And it actually increases your ROI pretty significantly as well, which we, you know, we really talk about a lot, Eric, you know, profitability. So again, think of it th about this. 80% of your FEX, your final expense clients, are already enrolled in Medicare, right? So 80% of your leads and your clients are already clients of yours or can be potential clients of yours. Um, if you look, the Medicare uh, supplement enrollment period is as follows. This is very simple. Um, it's a lot less convoluted than um, Medicare Advantage, right? So your Part B effective date, right? Your Medicare supplement open enrollment uh, period begins on your Part B effective date, right? So that's typically when you turn 65 or the month of. And then you have that six-month window, right, um, in terms of your open enrollment, and it ends at the end of the sixth month after your Part B effective date where um, you have to enroll in a Medicare supplement and not have to go through medical underwriting, right? And so here's a little bit of uh, IEP or we call initial eligibility or enrollment period, um, a little kind of graphic that just gives you based on if you turn 65 in any one of these specific months, and again, I think, Eric, we can make this available on the FFL Med site. Yeah, we will. And, ac and actually, okay. I want to take a second on this slide because uh, I think it's confusing to a lot of people. It was definitely confusing to me when I was starting to learn this because there's some confusion around Medicare initial enrollment and Medicare supplement. Exactly. Open enrollment, right? So Medicare has nothing to do with an insurance company. That's the federal government giving you Medicare, right? And so if you're turning 65 in, let's use your little chart here. So if you're turning 65 in June, then your initial enrollment period into Medicare is that March preceding my birthday all the way through September mm -hmm. of that year, right? And what that means is I can enroll in Medicare Actually, I must enroll in care, but in Medicare, but like, but I can enroll without any. There's no pre-existing conditions. There's no nothing. Like I'm guaranteed to be accepted into Medicare. Part A is an entitlement, it's free or zero premium. There's no cost for Part A, and Part B, there is a $170 a month premium for most people to get Part B, and they have to enroll in that in those seven months: the three months prior to your birthday, the birthday, or the three months after your birthday. For yep. Medicare. And then, once that's taken care of, you'll have a Medicare effective date. And now, yep. 
That is the Medicare supplement open enrollment, which is from your Medic Part B effective date for the next six months. And by open enrollment, it just means that they can't medically underwrite you. In other words, it doesn't. You could be dying of cancer, you could be whatever, and they have to take you as if you were squeaky clean. Yep. You know, and a good resource, guys, um, that you can always kind of depend on to have accurate information. There's a lot of information out there. Is you just go to Medicare.gov, and that gives you all the details. And you know, verbatim. Um, if you just type in when can I buy a Medigap policy or a Medicare supplement, it says the best time to buy a Medicare or Medigap policy or Medicare supplement is during your six-month Medigap open enrollment period. Um, and then it has different situations, right, um, whether it's during open enrollment. So if I'm 65 or older, if I'm turning 65, you know, so for example, somebody turning 65, it says the best time to buy Medigap is the six-month period that starts the first day of the month you're 65 or older and enrolled in Part B. So, for example, as Eric just stated, if you turn 65 and you're enrolled in Part B in June, the best time is June through November. All right. So, again, a great resource there. Just go to Medicare.gov, and every every question you have is answered there. But great points, Eric. All right. So, again, this just talks about what we what we kind of hit on there. Um, and you know, the important thing to remember when it comes to eligibility and enrollment is that sweet spot of when you're initially eligible at the age of 65 or you're losing your health insurance from, you know, your employer. Whenever you're initially eligible for Medicare Part B, see, Part A is automatic, right? Uh, Part A, as soon as you turn 65 or you become Medicare eligible, it just automatically goes in place. Part B, you actually have to elect, um, you know, to enroll in that. Um, and, you know, so, for example, if you're still employed and you have a, a uh, great health plan through your employer, you can hang on to that. And then whenever you decide to drop that coverage or you retire, then you can go to Part B. But the important thing to remember here and to talk to your clients about is the guaranteed issue rights that are available, right, uh, whenever you have that. So keep in mind that even though Medicare supplement insurance, insurance companies can't reject your clients' enrollments for health reason, the company is allowed to make them wait up to six months before covering a pre-existing condition. And then after that um, six-month waiting period is over, the plan will cover the pre-existing condition, and the pre-existing condition waiting period might even apply if they enroll in Medicare supplement plan, plan during their open enrollment period. So it's important to know, you know, what Medicare or medical conditions they have and then how that's going to be treated. Um, and that's going to be, you know, covered during all of the uh, training that's available for each carrier. But everything's pretty much uniform and standard. So let's talk about cross-selling opportunities because there's a ton of them. <clears throat> so what we've done uh, is we've just made a couple adjustments to the fun financial inventory. Um, and it's literally this simple is just adding this additional question. So utilizing the tools that we already have in place, right? So really not changing a whole lot, but just adding this section. Um, if you use the client worksheet here where it says Medicare information and you're just asking those questions, right? Filling in the blanks. Um, and then if you're using the financial inventory, right, have you been assigned your personal Medicare specialist yet? Yes or no? Okay. Would you like to see your new discounted rates for your county for your Medicare supplement? Um, and obviously we have other questions on there as well. So all this does, you know, are you enrolled in Medicare Part A? Yes or no? Part B? Yes or no? And then do you currently have a plan, F, G, N, or Medicare Advantage plan? So these uh, questions, very similar to how we approach the um, AMS advanced market sales stuff with the other questions up here relative to, um, you know, finding annuity opportunities, we're going to approach it the same way, right? We're just going to ask these questions, find the information, and then we're going to basically ask the client to dance, right? So um, I'm, I'm going to be your Medicare specialist, and uh, we're going to go over your Medicare options, and I'm going to help take care of you if I can put you in a better situation. All right, anything you want to add there, Eric? No, I just... Uh... those annuity opportunities, those IUL opportunities, is you want to play a game with yourself of how many um, uh, suitability uh, forms can I get filled out, right? He's got a, uh, that window in, in, it's built into the CRM too. Um, how, how many of these can I get filled out in a week? You know, if I'm going to run 20 appointments, how many of those am I going to do this application on? And I think the same thing with Medicare. If you want to up your Medicare opportunities at-bats and really see 
because the, the unique thing about Medicare as opposed to as opposed to really anything else that we sell is everyone has to have it. If they're in that age bracket, they must have it, right? And so uh, when you ask this question, you're positioning yourself not only with that client, but everybody that they know, you know, because <laughs> it's like, oh, you can help me with that? Well, man, my friend Carla and I were just talking about this. Maybe you can help her too. And you'd be amazed how, how often that happens. I'm talking to Medicare agents. They're like, dude, that's the best thing about, you know, working that niche, you know? Yeah. So that that's what I would say is just to make it a game of how many times can I, you know, ask that question and get a response. You know, and everybody wants to have that, I got a guy or I got a gal, right? You know, I got a Medicare guy, I got a Medicare gal. And you want to be that person because guess what? As Eric said, everybody needs, it's required. So somebody is going to, you know, handle their Medicare business and might as well be you. And I do right. love that, the way you phrase that, the personal Medicare specialist. You know, it's not, you know, it's because, I mean, you're paying for one anyway. I mean, if you, right, like if you just right. called up an 800 number and signed up with Aetna, there's there's still a commission in there that's being paid to the house. You might as well get a full service agent. It's going to cost exactly. you the same amount of money. Well, not only that, but, you know, we already have a relationship there, right? I already know this person. I know their beneficiaries because they're the beneficiaries in the life policy. You know, so it just makes sense, um, you know, that, that we're there taking care of their Medicare. You know, and thanks, Eric, for putting all this together and, you know, really giving us the opportunity to be able to, you know, capitalize on this. Pretty awesome. Well, that's all, Sean. Well, thank you, Sean Mike, for sure. As always, thank you, Sean Mike, for everything. All right, so um, the cross-sell, again, the whole point with um, our Medicare, guys, is it's going to be after the life policy. So we don't want to uh, throw out the baby with the bathwater. We don't want to switch from life sales to Medicare sales, which a lot of agents tend to do is, you know, they'll write some life insurance throughout the year, but then when Medicare season comes, they completely stop everything, and then they just focus on Medicare. And it's from August until, you know, January, and it really kills their business um, from a life and annuity option um, standpoint. So we want to make sure that we continue to maintain the momentum and then use this Medicare conversation to increase this momentum to help carry all of our practices and all of our agencies, you know, to the promised land and take care of this opportunity. So think let's just like we do when we talk about an annuity sale, um, let's close the life insurance um, loop first and then let's go back and then let's take care of the Medicare. Um, you'll find that Medicare is really a no brainer. Um, it's a lot less sales and, and more just, you want A, B, C, or D. You want yellow, red, or green, right? So opportunity number one is immediately after the sale. So, for example, after I close the life sale, right, I'm going to do the Colombo close. If you, We've all been in sales long enough to know that. It's the, you know, I'm out the door, but then I turn around and say, oh, you know, oh, by the way, one more thing, right? And you're going to reference the information that you collected on the financial inventory, and it works well with Medicare sales because you've already gained their trust. They're already your client. Right, and then you already also have their Medicare information, so it's kind of a oh by the way, uh, let me go ahead and take care of this. Kind of I forgot to mention, but I also take care of your Medicare. Um, so you're a, a trusted expert at that point. The other thing that it, there's a residual effect, Eric, that this has is increased persistency. Right, it keeps your your life insurance and anything else that you help that client with on the books. It also increases your ROI and your profitability. And then, as you mentioned earlier, it just adds an, a referral component. You see agents that engage in cross-selling Medicare, their referrals go through the roof. All right, so then also uh, a policy review, right? So the opportunity to cross-sell a Medicare supplement during a policy review. So, you know, uh, one of the things that we continue to get better and better at is going back to our book of business, right, uh, what I like to do is I like to, as soon as I close a sale, I like to program that client's date of birth into my calendar automatically, and it's an annual recurring uh, birthday, and then I get a notice a week before. So every week I have leads for the next week of people that it's their birthday. And one of the things that I include in there is their, um, obviously, the year, so I kind of know when they're going to be, um, you know, what year or how old they're going to be turning, I also include what their favorite candy is or something. So on an annual basis, when I'm doing a policy review, whether that's in person or over the phone, and I'm talking about, you know, their, their uh, birthday and giving them the warm and fuzzies, it's already kind of, it's something that I can lay the groundwork, you know, if somebody's leading up to turning 65, or 
we're going to have so many people that are turning 65, as you said, 80% or as we talked about earlier, 80% of our final expense clients are already in that pool. So a policy review gives us that opportunity. So again, all of your clients that are final expense are either going to turn 65 or they already are. And again, it's free leads, increased persistency, and then more referrals. I think sometimes people miss, you know, when we use percentages, you know, 80% sounds like a lot, you know. But uh, what always translated better for me is, you know, 80% is literally four out of five people. Mm -hmm. Four out of five people that you sit down with already have this pro have this product, and you can put them in a better situation theoretically. You know, at least at least you should check. You know, so I mean, four out of five. I mean, think about <laughs> how many appointments you run on a weekly basis. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable. Absolutely. No, you can literally be horrible at your job and still help a ton of people, right? And the, the worse we are, um, but the more activity we have, the better we're going to get. Um, you know, so, and then this is a little known kind of thought process. Again, most people focus on people turning 65 and then, you know, annual enrollment period. But this is a sweet spot niche that um, most people don't think about. You know, they, they sell their, their client, they enroll them in Medicare, and then they kind of set it and forget it. Um, but turning 65 um, and 65 and older uh, Medicare clients. So cross-selling the turning 65 and older prospects, what this does is they've had a Medicare supplement for years, and then they probably had price increases because the premiums are not fixed, right? They do potentially increase by class or by age group over time. And so, you know, somebody may have enrolled in a plan F or a different plan and whatever carrier that was for that county, um, the premium might be just not affordable. So when we sit down and we do a policy review with them, uh, what we're able to do is look at all the carriers that we have and we can change plans like to like or put them in a different or potentially better plan and either keep their premium the same or uh, decrease the premium. And that's such an important conversation right now to have, Eric, with inflation and, and the way things are going because most of your seniors are on a fixed income, right? And that dollar can only do so much. And with inflation, that dollar does a lot less now. So, again, a trusted advisor like us being able to come in and sit down and say, look, we can put $150 a month back on the table for you. Um, that makes a huge difference. And, yeah, this, um, this especially combined with that, uh, that debt program uh, that some of you guys have, have probably been paying attention to, the Empowering America debt program is amazing. But this found money concept is uh, is really brilliant because and, and this this again like not being uh, living in this industry for years and learning about it for the first time a plan G let's say if they have uh, Aetna Aetna plan G uh, we're, we're going to have a bunch of care we'll have Aetna but we'll also have you know Cigna and Lumico and and uh, you know uh, Humana you name it right. And a Plan G from Aetna is going to cover the exact same things as a Plan G from Medico. It's literally the exact same plan by law. The thing that's different about it is that I've heard of Aetna. I haven't heard of Medico, right? Or uh, this one is $32 a month more than this one is for whatever reason, right? And so the insurance carriers, they can decide what they want to charge zip code by zip code based on their own internal calculations, and then something that they like you can literally just well hey let me see if we can get you a better deal and move them from one carrier to the other not change their coverage at all uh, but powerfully impact their uh, month to month living situation absolutely and yeah I just want to talk about the concept real quick of found money um, because that's what that empowering America opportunity does it allows us to put money back in the pockets of the client and then help leverage some, not all of that money, but some of that money to increase their protection. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And then, you know, the Empowering America plus leveraging this where we can put more money back in their pocket, they might not have been able to afford a final expense product. Now they can. They might not have been able to afford, um, you know, something like insurance for the grandkids or a supplemental heart, you know, cancer policy. Um, you know, through Cigna or one of the other carriers, now we can. And so it, it just allows us to give more and to be more for our clients, um, you know, than ever before. 
Um, so we have a simple script here, Eric, um, and again, it's very straightforward. Would you like me to kind of dive into that, or do you just want to post yeah, it? Yeah, that'd be great. Go for okay. it. All right, so again, cross-selling during an, uh, an appointment, um, and, you know, you can kind of respond if you want to. We can do a little bit of role play. Sure. Um, but, you know, uh, Eric, so, you know, earlier uh, you mentioned that you're currently enrolled in Medicare. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So as your agent, your local field under it, it's my job to help make sure that you have the best plan for your needs at the lowest rate in this county. So let's take a few minutes to ensure that you're in the best position uh, possible, okay? Okay. So then what we're going to do is, um, you know, using the tools that we have on FFL Med, we can literally just punch in the client's zip code, and it'll pull up all the plans and carriers that are available for that client, right? And we can see either based on what they currently have, if they're already enrolled in a Medicare supplement, or if they're going into and, and initially eligible, we can legitimately show them what's best for them. And again, it is usually plan G, N, or sometimes F if they did turn 65 prior to January of 2021. Um, but G or N are the most comprehensive and the most um, common plans now for anybody. Um, and then if, if it is a Medicare Advantage plan, we'll do a, um, a lot more training on that. But you do there are a lot of different rules to follow. So again, we're kind of focusing right now on Medicare supplements. So um, Eric, so you know, again, uh, your local, as your uh, local agent, local field or under, underwriter, it's my job to help make sure that you, we find you the best plans at the lowest rate available. We're not only going to re review your life insurance coverage, um, so this is going to be for um, during a policy review, right? So I'm sitting down. We're not only going to review your life insurance coverage, Eric, but we are going to make sure that um, you have the absolute best for your Medicare as well. So we'll take a few minutes to ensure that you're in the best position there too, okay? Yeah, perfect. All right. And then also, when we're setting a T65 appointment, so somebody's turning 65, whether I use this during uh, using the T65 app or I got a list of people turning 65, or it's just one of my clients. So, Eric, um, again, this is Neil with uh, Family First Life here in Volusia County. How you doing? Good. Listen, um, you know, uh, as your life insurance client or your life insurance broker, um, first of all, um, I have a note here that you're turning 65. Um, next month uh, in August, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Well, again, as your local field underwriter, it's my job to help make sure to answer your Medicare questions. As you know, we were able to take care of your life insurance, but um, you know, as far as turning 65, it's my job to help review the best options with you. Now, they have me dispatched to see you tomorrow. Um, I wanted to confirm what time works best for both of us. I can't remember, are you still working? You retired or are you disabled there? No, they still got me working, man. Okay. Yep. But I'll be hey. home after four. It's a blessing um, for most people, but uh, especially in, in today's day and age. So uh, you said uh, time, you, you're uh, home after four, is that correct? Yeah, uh, although they, they already sent me something in the mail, and I already, I already filled out something, signed up for some kind, of, some kind of Medicare plan already, I think. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll review that and see what you signed up for, if you actually did. A lot of times when you fill that stuff out, it's just to uh, notify an agent to contact you. All right, so you said uh, four. I actually have an opening at 515 and then 545. Which of those works better for you? Uh, the, the earlier one's fine. Okay. And then obviously you're going to tie it down. So any comments there, Eric? No. I, I think the key thing is like uh, uh, for some of these, uh, I'm curious to see what you have to say about the door knocking one because uh, I think a lot of people, you know, it was just, it's so funny. I was literally on the phone with this uh, Medicare agent who doesn't work with us, but he's thinking about coming over. And he specifically asked, he goes, oh, you guys are with Integrity? He goes, you guys have that Integrity with the, uh, that app with the map? And I'm like, yeah, do you use that? And he goes, oh, I use it all the time. That's like my best source of lead. Yeah. So uh, and I was asking him kind of how his approach was. And, I mean, it's just, uh, to me, that's, that's just the icing on the cake. That it app. really is. So, you know, I was with a practice company, um, you know, way back that's kind of similar in structure to how we are. And um, we used a, a um, pioneered kind of program um, that was similar to this, but it's just not as intuitive. I mean, technology is unbelievable, and the way it syncs with maps and everything is unbelievable. So um, real quick with the setting appointments with people that are 67 or better. So Eric, hey, this is Neil with Family First here in Volusia County. Listen, I'm following up with you to schedule your annual Medicare review. As your local field underwriter, it's my job to help make sure that you have the best plans in place for your needs at the lowest rates available. Typically, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes they have me dispatch Eric to complete your review tomorrow, and I wanted to confirm a time that works for both of us instead of just showing up. 
and then again, you're going to set the appointment and tie it down. Very, very simple. Um, if I'm calling 100 of those people, you're going to see a lot more of those appointments um, be able to be set versus, you know, what we might be used to if, you know, you're calling three-month-old leads. And, and again, I can come back and all of those old leads that I have, whether they're one-month instance or any of those, these are all now Medicare leads, okay? Um, and then as far as door knocking, again, I'm going to pull up that T65 app. I'm going to literally see um, geographically on a map with little pins what's available in that area. Um, so, Eric, listen, uh, I'm going to knock on the door, bang, bang. So, knock, knock, Eric. Yeah, who's who's it? Who is it? Eric, uh, who there? Who that? Who that? This is Neil. I'm with Family First here in Volusia County. Um, listen, I'm actually just following up with you uh, to schedule your Medicare review. Uh, we were actually trying to get a hold of you on the phone, but I'm the local field underwriter. Um, as your local field underwriter, it's my job to make sure to answer any questions, walk you through everything, and then also ensure that you have the best plans in place to fit your needs at the lowest rate available here in the county. Um, so again, I'm showing them the T65 app now, right? Because mm -hmm. that is an official you know, looking thing that I can show them. And it's not just some piece of paper that has their information. It's not a printout, right? It can't be ma manipulated. I'm showing them, look, this is my list, and they're telling me that I have to come see you, right? And so I'm looking at this, and they're seeing their name there. They're seeing their house, and they're seeing their date of birth. So I'm confirming their date of birth, right? So, Eric, your date of birth is yada, yada, yada. Are you still working, retired, or disabled? And then I want to make the assumption that they can discuss the information then. They're home. They answered the door. It's only going to take me 10 to 15 minutes, right? But if they say they're busy, then I'm going to say, well, listen, obviously, you know, I wasn't planning on going over this with you now. As you can see, I have a lot of other, you know, clients that I have to confirm for tomorrow as well. So uh, I have to meet a client in 15 minutes to do review their um, information as well. And I can refer to that app and then say, you know, I got Bob over here down the street that got, I got to meet with. Um, so we need to schedule a time that works for both of our schedules. So plus, I also want to make sure Mrs. Hamadi is there as well. Does that make sense? Yep. And then normally, are you available morning or afternoon? And then the traditional set the appointment and tie it down. So that's kind of been my approach to door knocking when it is Medicare. Be very assumptive. You know, yeah. you're very official. Now, you don't want to misrepresent. You can, this is an important point, Eric. You cannot say that you work for Medicare, you know, that, you know, that your Medicare assigned you to them or anything like that. Again, you want to maintain, you know, transparency, honesty, and do things the right way uh, and be compliant. This is to help them with this. And, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, they don't have somebody that's actually, you know, helping them with it. Exactly. So. And plus, I'm local, right? I'm not somebody that's in California on the phone, you know, that could care less about them. I live, you know, down the street. Right. We'll yep. probably see each other at, you know, that new restaurant that just opened up. Yep. So. All right. So, you know, that's kind of the basics with respect to that. So, um, you know, what's next? Obviously, you got to get contracted, guys. Um, you want to contact your VP or contact Jasmine Savage. Um and then study the plans, mostly G and N. Um, Eric, I think on the next one, we're going to discuss and review some of the elder care tools and then resources to quote and roll. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to have uh, uh, hopefully Adrian come on here and kind of walk us through everything, which will be fun. Awesome. And then from there, guys, you pick your prospecting list. Either it's your current clients, your current leads that you have out there, a T65 list or the uh, Integrity app or 67 or better, and then you just got to go to work, you know, helping people. So in between appointments or on a slow day or just add this into your practice, remember FFL plus Medicare equals more clients for life. And, um, you know, tagline. this is just that, that, yeah, that little overview. We can't say it enough. We got to, yeah. you know, we got to keep I love it. saying. But, um, I love it. you know, this is just that, uh, exactly, that little overview if you look at plans F, G, and N, the most common plans, if you look, you have all these green check marks. The only difference between G and F, uh, Eric, is, you know, that Part B deductible, right, which is relatively nominal. Uh, nominal? Nominal. Nominal. Small. Nominal. <laughs> yeah, nominal. Nom. Never mind. There's <laughs> nominal. That's the comic relief. Nominal. <laughs> there we go. It's small. 
It's small. It's not phenomenal. It's just nominal. Exactly. It's nominal. Nominal. Um, so anyway, uh, the Part B deductible um, that's very small there, and what it does is it translates into a reduced monthly premium, right? So for somebody that's healthy and that doesn't go to the doctor a whole lot, it really uh, ends up translating into a lot of um, back-in-the-pocket money for them. Uh, I think otherwise, the, the plans are the same. I think the but, way to, uh, the way that this was explained to me, which I thought was great, was, okay, if... If, if, you have, if you're a person of means, you know, you, you have some disposable income, you want plan F because plan yep. F pays for everything, okay? And the re, the, now, if you turn 65 after uh, 2021, I believe is the date, right? Correct. January of 2020, actually. January 2020. Correct. So before that, you, if, if, you're, if you were eligible 2020 or before, you're good, right? You can still get F. However, if you're turning 65 after that date, you can no longer, they're not selling Plan F to new Medicare enrollees uh, because it was so abused, <laughs> because it paid for everything. Yeah. And people just literally, you didn't have any skin in the game. You just paid your monthly premium and you got, you know, it was like med medical on tap. And so G is now the Cadillac, the new Cadillac. And so G is exactly like Part F, except that there's an annual deductible. And I think it's, is it 250 bucks or something like that? It's uh, something like that. It goes up every year. Yeah. So a uh, nominal or minimal uh, yeah. deductible, well, not, not, not big is, is, is what we're trying to say. Right. So G, if you're turning, if you turn 65 in 2020, 2021, 2022, right now, G is the best you can do. Okay. Yep. If you're 68, 69, 70, you can still get F. If you were ever eligible for F, you can still get F. Right. And then N is the step down from G, which is basically you pay the deductible and you also pay, I think it's a doc, you know, copay every time you go to the doctor, copay every time you go to the hospital, the excess charges like that, which is also still minimal, but it just, it's a little bit more skin in the game and it's, and it's, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks a month cheaper. So, right. yep. uh, yeah, and then nice. the rest of them are just le less and less attractive, you know, uh, from there. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, and again, the premiums vary across the board, but the important thing to remember is that it doesn't matter the carrier, it doesn't matter the state or the agent, um, all the plans are exactly the same, right? So chocolate is chocolate no matter what carrier is selling it. Yeah, love that. So finally, again, just, you know, go to this beautiful site that Eric put together, um, fflmed.com. Look for the agent tab at the top right and then click on contracting and then just fill in the information. Um, make sure that, um, you know, you're putting the appropriate commission level in there that you're at. Don't try to, you know, be sneaky with that, and then make we'll sure catch that you anyway. appropriate. Yeah, exactly. Make sure you're putting in the appropriate agency, um, you know, with a logo that, uh, that you're with, and um, we'll make sure to get everybody uh, contracted, and it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So, um, but, uh, you know, we'll be open to any questions, so if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, uh, participate and get uh, joined up with the uh, FFL Medicare Facebook group. Eric, how do they access that? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna post this recording in there as well. But it's uh, it's uh, Facebook.com/groups/FFLMed, and um, and and we'll do, we'll we'll post this video up. We'll have a Q and A, and uh, both Neil and myself will be in there to make sure that uh, any questions that you ask are answered. But Neil, this is phenomenal, man. Again, appreciate you being on, and. Uh, Tune in again next week so we're going to dive in more into the tools and the different resources that we have available. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, guys.